Hello, Madam Senator Zamraho. Leaders of our nation's highest institutions, honored guests, including chiefs of defense staff, members of the diplomatic corps, friends of Rwanda, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Banyar Rwanda Mwese, Nonje Kuba Suza. Mere Nokura Haturi Nichimwe Mobigara Gaza Ukotu Gujenda, Tkuyuaka, Tkonjara Kubaki Yugu Church. Banyar Rwanda rero tagira ngo munyihanganire kuri byinshi nze gukoresha ururime rwa mahanga mwebwe dusanzwe twumvikana dusanzwe tuganira ndagira ngo nabo banyumve ndagira ngo abandi batumva ikinyarwanda banyumve batagombye gusemurirwa today we come to the end of a period of commemoration and celebrate the liberation of our country i want to thank all of our guests and friends who have joined us on this special day. Rwandans today are better and stronger than we have ever been. We keep marching forward like the men and women of our defense and security forces who have just paraded before us. Three decades ago, this building was the site of refuge and rescue from the surrounding neighborhoods. Rwandans flowed here for safety. And many were saved, thanks to the Rwandan Patriotic Army. An act, an act that was repeated countless times all across our country. On July the 4th, we express our thanks to those who liberated Rwanda and remember those who gave their lives. Our army and security forces are a powerful symbol of unity and safety. In opinion surveys ranking trust in the public institutions, Rwandans consistently rate our security forces among the highest. That is no accident. After the genocide, the first encounter that most Rwandans had with the new authorities 
was with our army. The situation in the country was still extremely tense and dangerous. Yet, our forces did everything in their power to treat all Rwandans with professionalism and humanity, setting the tone of everything that followed. Even today, they remain close to the community and invest in projects that matter to our development, such as infrastructure and medical services. This pact of trust, which we call Ijiango, is indeed the solid foundation upon which our country was rebuilt. It was not easy. Remaining principled and consistent is hard, very difficult. But that product of doing hard things is absolutely beautiful. By nature, Rwandan security posture has always been defensive, not offensive. We only act when trouble is brought to us. We prioritize cooperation and working together. Rwanda seeks peace for ourselves and for everyone in our region. We know the value of peace just as well as anyone else, maybe even more. Where there is a need for humanitarian action, Rwanda will not be absent. But the only real answer to any humanitarian crisis is to fix the root cause of the political problem. Humanitarian response cannot substitute for political solutions. If we had not changed the formula here in Rwanda, for sure, our country would still be under a United Nations peacekeeping force divided and destitute. Liberation cannot be imposed on people by force or fear. It is unlocked by a free choice that each citizen makes in their heart. Because Rwandans, with very few exceptions, have freely made this choice, our country is at peace and will remain at peace no matter what. Rwanda's uniqueness only grows more notable with time. 
we have shattered every negative taboo and assumption about being Rwandan. Our politics today is based on accountability and ambition. It is a way for all Rwandans to lead a better life. Politics is no longer a tool to exclude and harm each other. We respect our government, but we do not, we do not fear it because it serves all of us without distinction. A few people still outside, a few people outside still do not understand Rwandans. Some of them even try to spoil what we are building and we see it. But all those negative efforts produce no results. They are just words on the internet or statements somewhere on, in different high offices with no power over us at all. The values Rwandans have are now part of us. There is nobody and nothing powerful enough to take that away from us. The end point of the liberation struggle was to build a state in which each of us is valued and the citizens are always at the center of government action. Even though Rwandans have made huge strides towards this mindset, we must remain vigilant. I'm addressing this message in particular to Rwanda's young people, especially those born over the last 30 years. This country is yours to protect, defend, and make prosperous. It is worth repeating that real liberation only begins when the guns fall silent. We began that stage 30 years ago, and we are counting on you, the liberation generation, to take us Father. Rwanda's struggle today has a bigger scope than just surviving. It's about living well with success. <clears throat> Succeeding against the poverty, dependence, and indignity. Succeeding as an upright nation of Africans who play our part to build a better continent and a fairer world. You have the freedom and the opportunity to live 
the lives you want. But wherever your life takes you, remember your duty to uphold the good politics we have built. Speak up, take part, and give back. Those are the civic values that we want to define the next generation of Rwandans. Ubutumwa ndabubwira cyane cyane urubyiruko rw'iki gihugu cyacu nibanda cyane ko bavutse mu myaka 36 cyangwa mbere yaho gato bakiri bato iki gihugu ni mwe mugomba kukirinda mukakirwanirira bicho chikakomeza gutera imbere byari ngombwa kubisubiramo kuyibohora nyako gutangira irusaku rwimbunda rugabano se cyangwa rutagihari nagomba kuvuga byinshi birenze ibi ariko nkuko mu Kinyarwanda bivuga kuyavuga ntabwo why are you? Even the to the Shakumania to be Vujarahan, the Changu de Mons. Messerero, be for the Je, Monsumiza. Okuibuka Kuibohora, Ishora and Rongutatu Ivana Ivarinde, Mojera Mahoreya.